last 30 years, we have had a long time partner with the city of Garland in this event. It began with nine entries, if you can believe that. Really refreshing is to see the delight on the children's faces. Over the years, we've had some trials and tribulations, but we never once have canceled. City for continuing to uh, partner with us, but more importantly, to collaborate with us as well. Hello and welcome to the Garland 32nd uh, Martin Luther King event, which is a virtual fair. Normally at this time, we'll be standing outside, putting balloons on cars, fellowshipping with one another at Austin Middle School, and just getting to know each other again from last year. But this year is different for us. This will be the first year that we have not been able to go outside and just have a parade. And everyone knows through the Metroplex that the city of Garland always, always have their parade, even through rain, shine, sleet, or snow. So there's no way of stopping us to continue the legacy of Dr. King. This year in 2020, we were faced with very many limitations with uh, COVID, uh, really putting a lot of um, attention to the way we live. We wore masks, we social distanced, we uh, had to uh, take kids out of school so they could be taught from home. Parents had to work from home. Then we had the essential workers who had to go out and put their lives on the line in order for us to continue to live as normal as possible. Churches had to close their doors and we are not fellowshipping in church, but thank God for uh, social media through Zoom, through uh, uh, videos that we have, through YouTube, and uh, also through uh, Facebook. And uh, what we've learned is that we can uh, connect together. So one of the things that I want to share with you on Facebook is that a wise person, David Smith, once said that we all have uh, opportunities that are available to, available to us. And if we don't take advantage of those opportunities, then those opportunities will do us any will not do us any good. What this committee has done for the MLK uh, celebration, they have taken advantage of every opportunity to make sure that we have this celebration, and we are so happy for that. So we just want you to know that. Dr. King lived a life of legacy, and I know he would be proud that we were persistent in making sure that we would celebrate his birthday as always. This is such a wonderful time and a most, most um, given time for us to be doing this. And the reason for this is because 
With 2020, we not only faced a pandemic, but we faced social injustice. We faced uh, too many people dying of COVID, which the number is too long and too wide to even gather. Some of us have lost loved ones. I know we have. And so with that, we are going to continue. One of the things that is so great about the way we are doing this is that as American citizens, especially in the Garland area and all over the world, people have found a way to reconnect with the human spirit. The human spirit is what's going to keep us going until this pandemic is over. So at this time, I want you to sit back. Go grab a soda or a tea or coffee or anything that you want to enjoy with your snacks and sit back and let's have fun with this virtual event of the 32nd MLK Parade. Hi, my name is Michael Mitchell. I'm the assistant pastor at Pentecost Church of God in Christ, uh, wherever Mark Clemens is the pastor. Would you join with me in prayer? Father God, as we approach your throne, we want to first say thank you for being a God of all people. It is through you that we are able to pursue our dreams and unity. Um, and we pray that thou would be with us uh, during our virtual time together and throughout the upcoming uh, days, weeks, and months, and throughout this new year of 2021. We ask you to look on every member of our churches, every member of the NAACP, bless their officers, and bless the work of their hands. And as we join as a community, God, we come as humble as we know how, asking you to go before us. You see what's ahead of us, but we are undaunted. You know what we're going to face, but you are strength and you are very present help in the time of trouble. We come together to commemorate the life and the legacy of one who was at the forefront of the struggle towards freedom and equity. We also pray your mercy and grace as we join with our sisters and brothers within this community uh, in every race and creed along our journey of life that is placed before us throughout each of our lives. We give you thanks for allowing us to come together. We thank you for Dr. Martin Luther King's contributions as he responded to your call and sacrificed much. He served all and shared unselfishly. He gave of himself to fight for freedom and the well-being of the disenfranchised people the disenfranchised people. Many struggles were apparent, but he and others were undaunted by them and continue to fight on. Help us that we will continue to fight, continue to pray, continue the work that has been started. Give us courage and help us to be obedient. And as we reminded by the word that reminds us that, uh, we are pressed on every side, but we are not crushed. We are perplexed, but we are not in despair. We are persecuted, but not abandoned. We may be struck down, but we are not destroyed. Second Corinthians 4, 8 through 9. Even today, Lord, strengthen us that his hope become our hope. And that we may take up the fight for diversity and inclusion with dignity and discipline. As Joshua was toward Moses, let us, this new generation, work toward enabling Dr. King's dream of togetherness become tangible and let unity be throughout. And let us, each of us emulate his call for freedom to reign. And as we close with the extracted words of Dr. Martin Luther King, he said, we got some difficult days ahead, but that doesn't matter with me now. I just want to do God's will. So we pray that you will keep us throughout these difficult days ahead. And our time in our community 
let it be fruitful. That we will keep in mind that you shall supply all of our needs according to your riches and glory. By Christ Jesus. Amen. Hello, my name is Jackson Webster Lux Street. I attend Kimberlin Academy and I am a member of Kaiser Street Baptist Church, the City of Life in Garland. Where Reverend Milton Doyle is my pastor, I will be reading from the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 3, verse 1 through 8. A time for everything. There is a time for everything and a season for every activity under heaven. A time to be born and a time to die. A time to plant and a time to unroot. A time to kill and a time to heal. A time to tear down and a time to build. A time to weep and a time to laugh. A time to mourn and a time to dance, a time to scatter and stones, and a time to gather them, a time to embrace, and a time to refrain, a time to search, and a time to give up, a time to keep, a time to throw away, a time to tear, and a time to me mend, a time to seal it, and a time to speak, a time to love, and a time to hate, a time of for war, and a time for peace. Thank you. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Order! Colors! Right! Case! Forward! March! Hello everyone. As we all know, 2020 was a year filled with trials and triumphs, along with struggles while standing our ground for justice and equality. Yet through it all, we were able to take a look back at our past and realize the strength our ancestors had left for us to help pull us through these tough times, in words and in song. Most of us have heard of the Negro National Anthem. You know, lift every voice and sing. But do we really know how the words to this song empowered a group of people to continuously push forward and make life better for themselves while also enduring some of life's harshest circumstances? Lift Every Voice and Sing was originally a poem written by James Weldon Johnson in 1900 and set to music by his brother J. Roseman Johnson in 1905 to celebrate Abraham Lincoln's birthday. As the years passed, the song gained popularity and began to resonate with millions of African Americans who were only a generation or two removed from slavery. So in 1919, the NAACP, nicknamed Lift Every Voice and Sing to the Negro National Anthem for its accuracy in voicing a cry for liberation and affirmation for people of color. 
The song also was written as a prayer of thanksgiving for faithfulness and freedom while invoking images of slaves moving toward this goal. The song is featured in 39 different Christian hymnals and has been sung in churches and venues across North America for more than 120 years. It is only fitting that we continue the long-standing tradition of performing Lift Every Voice and Sing to honor a man whose life embodies the true meaning of this song. So today, we salute and honor your life, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. for the march you made for us until your victory was won. Lift every voice and sing Till earth and heaven ring Ring with the harmonies Of liberty Let our rejoice Yeah. 
end. Hello everyone, I'm Garland Mayor Scott LeMay. I'm coming to you today in a different format, but one we have all become accustomed to during this difficult time. My greatest hope is that we will be able to come back together soon to share our joys and our struggles. It's that true togetherness that helps sustain us. While technology can bring us visually together, it can't replace a handshake or a hug. We've had to forego many traditions during this time that bring us together. Traditions that go back generations that bring generations together. And while that's hard for us, it's important to our health and safety. This year we will not be able to celebrate the life and message of Dr. King together, but we will always have his words to lead us forward. Dr. King said, we must accept finite disappointment, but never lose infinite hope. My hope is to see you all soon. Take care, stay safe, and God bless. Hey, it's Rick Lopez, proud superintendent of Garland ISD. You know, for years, Garland ISD has been described as a diverse community with a shared vision. Those two ideals, diversity and unity, are the exact reasons we are celebrating today. Dr. King sought to bring us all together because our differences are what makes our world a great place. I think his message is exactly what we need today. Dr. King said, Darkness cannot drive out darkness. Only light can do that. Hate cannot drive out hate. Only love can do that. Although these are dark and heartbreaking times, we cannot lose our faith and hope in one another. The bonds of the Garland ISD community are as strong as our commitment to each other, and we know that we are truly better together. We believe that a child's brilliance and worth is not determined by a zip code or wealth, and certainly not by the color of their skin. We are also committed to equity with hiring practices, innovative programs for all children, school choice, and of course, our College for All initiative. With the help of community partners like the NAACP, the City of Garland, and each and every one of you, we are bringing the vision of educational excellence to reality. Thank you all for your support. I am proud to work alongside you as we change the world one student at a time. Now more than ever, I believe that 2021 is a year of hope. Hope not to only end the suffering from COVID-19, but to also bridge the divide felt in our nation. If we cling to Dr. King's ideals of unity and diversity, we can lead each other to brighter days. I know the Garland USA community will be an example for the rest of the world to follow, and I look forward to continuing our work together to do what's best for students. We are definitely better together. Hi, I'm Robert Selders Jr., President of the Garland ISD Board of Trustees. And on behalf of the Board of Trustees, I'm honored to welcome you to this virtual Martin Luther King Jr. Day celebration sponsored by the Garland Unit of the NAACP. This event matters to us. For everyone who's been a part of it, this is a time when we come together as a community of scholars and as citizens within our GISD Tri-City community to reflect and to be reminded that the things we share in common far exceed those things that make us different. This Martin Luther King Jr. celebration has become a way of marking time. Each year, the celebration symbolizes the start of the next semester and it symbolizes the recommitment to the pursuit of excellence and things that all of our stakeholders hold dear. Now that doesn't mean we won't have obstacles to overcome. This pandemic has really highlighted some of the issues we already know. For example, challenges around ensuring equity and access across the entire system, decreasing academic achievement gaps, social and emotional learning, mental wellness, college and career military readiness, and early literacy. All of these issues impact our community. School districts across the country are all experiencing these things, and it's going to take a different approach to solve these critical issues. As trustees, administrators, teachers, parents, students, and community members alike, we must all stand up and unite together. Despite our background, level of education, 
and economic status, we must come together so that we can fight to ensure all students in the GISD will be successful. It's not about singling out anyone's effort, but more about working collaboratively and coming together as partners so that we can collectively do our part in order to make a difference. I'd like to take a moment to thank the Garland Unit of the NAACP for being such great educational partners. And as board president, I'm looking forward to working with them and you, the entire Garland ISD community, to make a difference and to ensure that every student receives an exceptional education. On behalf of the Garland Chamber of Commerce staff, board of directors, and all of our members, we bring greetings to the award-winning Garland NAACP on the occasion of their virtual MLK celebration. For as long as I've been here, 31 years, uh, the Garland NAACP has been the unifying force to bring the community together, and we applaud their efforts uh, over that period of time. Uh, we wish you the best going forward. We count on your leadership in a time when our country and our communities need you the most. Uh, we hope that all of your people that, that are close to you are safe and well, and we wish you the best of luck in 2021. I've been walking with my face turned to the sun. Weight on my shoulder, the bullet in my gun. Oh, I've got eyes in the back of my head. Just in case I have to run I do what I can when I can While I care for my people While the clouds roll back And the stars fail the night That's when I'm gonna stand up Take my people with me Together we are going to a brand new home Far across the river Can you hear freedom calling? Calling me to answer Gonna keep on keeping on I can feel it in my bones Hey Early in the morning now, before the sun begins to shine, we're gonna start moving towards a separating line. Oh, I'm waiting through muddy water. You know I gotta make. to salvation and I'll fight with the strength that I got until I die so I'm gonna stand up take my people with me together we are going to a brand new home Far across the river, can you hear freedom calling? Calling me to answer, gonna keep on keeping on. And I know what's around the bend might be hard to face cause I'm alone. And I just might fail, but Lord knows I tried. So I still fill up the sky. Stand up, take my people with me. Together we are going to a brand new home. Far across the river. I have freedom calling So I answer I keep on keeping on I can feel it in my bones I 
everybody. I'm Gwendolyn H. Daniels, the coordinator of Garland's MLK Celebrations. We are so proud to say this is our 32nd year having public acknowledgments by way of celebrations here in Garland of the life and legacy of the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. And I tell you what, the question is why celebrate? It's because Dr. King was a major component. He was the major leader of the civil rights movement here in our country. And his work literally changed not just this country, but the entire world. In fact, you know, Dr. King won a Nobel Peace Prize, but I want to zero in for just a moment on his tragic death. He was murdered by a racist April 4th at the Lorraine Motel. Dr. King was gunned down. And I tell you what, he left behind a beautiful family. Mrs. Coretta Scott King and their four precious children. But Dr. King's legacy lives on because right today, the, his, the advances we made here in our country are a major factor from his work in the civil rights movement. Now Garland's MLK celebrations consist of four components. We have a parade, we have a commemorative program following the parade. During that program, we have a magnificent citywide youth choir. We have a youth extravaganza the following Sunday afternoon. So my kudos to Mrs. Mrs. Koshara Jackson, the chairperson of the youth extravaganza, and the Honorable Linda L. Griffin, who chairs our magnificent MLK uh, Youth Choir, along with her son, who serves as our clinician. That is Mr. Reuben Lael. And our commemorative program is chaired by Terry Doggett. She's so faithful at what she does. And I have the honor of chairing the Martin Luther King Jr. Parade. It began with just nine entries after the vision of our then president of the NAACP Garland Unit, who thought, why do we need to drive to Dallas for a parade? We can have our parade right here. We started with nine entries, nine. Now we, we have over 130 entries each and every year in our parade. And I tell you what, there was one year, the weather was so terrible that the media began getting press releases from Grand Prairie, from Dallas, from um, all over the county in the Northeast Texas region saying the parades in their cities were being canceled. And they realized there's a city hadn't checked out the list yet. They called us and we immediately said, we will not cancel our parade because Dr. King never canceled on us. Even if we had to just simply walk in the parade because of the uh, sleet that was coming down, we would walk. And from that year on, this year marks the first time because of the pandemic that we won't have the parade. I invite you though to go and visit the Garland TX N-A-A-C-P dot org website. That's Garland TX N-A-A-C-P dot org website and view the beautiful photos from the 2020 MLK parade and then consider enrolling and joining us in 2022 for our 33rd celebration. Before I sign off, I want to give thanks to our two community partners who have joined the NAACP in making this celebration bigger and better. And that's none other than the city of Garland and the Garland Independent School District. Together, all three of us are forging forward and we invite you to enjoy this program today. It's a virtual affair. Bye-bye now. Hello, everyone. My name is Kendall Sims.
I come from the church where my pastor is Elder Mark Clemens at Pentecost Church of God in Christ in Garland. And today I will be reciting the Martin Luther King Jr. I Have a Dream speech, or the actual name of the speech, which is March on Washington for Jobs and Freedom. I am happy to join with you today in what will go down in history as the greatest demonstration for freedom in the history of our nation. Five score years ago, a great American, in whom symbolic shadow we stand today, sounded the Emancipation Proclamation. This momentous decree came as a great beacon light of hope to millions of Negro slaves who had been seared by the flames of withering injustice. It came as a joyous daybreak to end the long night of their captivity. But 100 years later, the Negro still is not free. 100 years later, the life of the Negro is still sadly crippled by the manacles of segregation and the chains of discrimination. 100 years later, the Negro still lives on a lonely island of poverty in the midst of a vast ocean of material prosperity. 100 years later, the Negro is still languished in the corners of American society and finds himself in exile in his own land. And so we've come here today to dramatize a shameful condition. In a sense, we've come to our nation's capital to cash a check when the architects of our republic wrote the magnificent words of the Constitution and the Declaration of Independence. They were signing a promissory note into which every American was to fall heir. This note was a promise that all men, yes, black men as well as white men, would be guaranteed the inalienable rights of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. It is obvious today that America has defaulted on this promissory note, insofar as her citizens of color are concerned. Instead of honoring this sacred obligation, America has given the Negro people a bad check, a check which has come back marked insufficient funds. But we refuse to believe that the Bank of Justice is bankrupt. We refuse to believe that there are any insufficient funds in the great vaults of opportunity of this nation. And so we have come to cash this check, a check that will give us upon demand the riches of freedom and the security of justice. It is time to remind America of the fierce urgency of now. This is not a time to engage in the luxury of cooling off or to take the tranquilizing drug of gradualism. Now is the time to make real the promises of democracy. Now is the time to rise from the dark and desolate valley of segregation into the sunlit path of racial justice. Now is the time to lift our nation from the quicksands of racial injustice into the solid rock of brotherhood. Now is the time to make justice a reality for all of God's children. It would be fatal to overlook the urgency in the moment. This sweltering summer of the, Negro, of the Negro's legitimate discontent will not pass until there is an invigorating autumn of freedom and equality. 1963 is not an end, but a beginning. And to those who hope the Negro needed to blow off steam and will now be content, will have a rude awakening if the nation returns to business as usual. There will be neither rest nor tranquility in America until the Negro is granted his citizenship rights. The whirlwinds of revolt will continue to shake the foundations of our nation until the bright day of justice emerges. But there is something I must say to my people who stand on the warm threshold which leads into the palace of justice. In the process of gaining our rightful place, we must not be guilty of wrongful deeds. Let us not seek to satisfy our thirst for freedom by drinking from the cup of bitterness and hatred. We must forever conduct our struggle on the high plane of dignity and discipline. We must not allow for our creative protest to degenerate into physical violence. Again and again, we must rise to the majestic heights of meeting physical force with soul force. This marvelous new militancy, which has engulfed the Negro community, must not lead us to the distrust of all white people. For many of our white brothers, as evidenced by their presence here today, have come to realize that their destiny is tied up with our destiny, and that their freedom is inextricably bound to our freedom. We cannot walk alone. And as we walk, we must make the pledge that we shall always march ahead. We cannot turn back. There are those who are asking the devotees of civil rights, when will you be satisfied? <laughs> we can never be satisfied, so long as the Negro is the victim of the unspeakable horrors of police brutality. We can never be satisfied, so long as our bodies, heavy with the fatigue of travel, cannot gain lodging in the motels of the highways and hotels of the cities. 
We cannot be satisfied so long as the Negro's basic mobility is from a smaller ghetto to a larger one. We can never be satisfied so long as our children are stripped of their selfhood and robbed of their dignity by saying stating for whites only. We can never be satisfied so long as a Negro in Mississippi cannot vote and a Negro in New York believes he has nothing for which to vote. No, no, we are not satisfied, and we will never be satisfied until justice rolls down like waters and righteousness like a mighty stream. I am not unmindful that some of you have come here out of great trials and tribulations. Some of you have come fresh from narrow jail cells, and some areas, and some of you have come from areas where your quest for freedom has left you battered by the storms of persecution and left staggered by the winds of police brutality. You are the veterans of creative suffering. Continue to work with the faith that unearned freedom is redemptive. Go back to Mississippi. Go back to South Carolina. Go back to Georgia. Go back to Louisiana. Go back to the slums and ghettos of our northern cities, knowing that this situation can and will be changed. Let us not wallow in the valley of despair, I say to you today, my friends. And so, even though we face the difficulties of today and tomorrow, I still have a dream. It is a dream that is deeply rooted in the American dream. I have a dream that one day this nation will rise up and live out the true meaning of its creed. We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal. I have a dream that in the red hills of Alabama, sons of former slaves and sons of former slave owners will be able to sit down together at the table of brotherhood. I have a dream that one day in the state of Mississippi, a state sweltering with the heat of oppression, a state sweltering with the heat of injustice, will one day be transformed into an oasis of freedom and justice. I have a dream that one day my four little children will one day live in a nation where they are not judged by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character. I have a dream today. I have a dream that one day, down in Alabama, with its vicious racists, which is with its governor of having his lips of dripping of the words of interposition and nullification. One day right there, little black boys and little black girls will be able to join hands with little white boys and white girls as sisters and brothers. I have a dream today. I have a dream that every valley shall be exalted, and every hill and mountain be made low. The rough places made plain, the crooked places made straight, and the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all flesh shall see it together. This is our faith, and this is the faith that I go back to the south with. With this faith, we will be able to hew out of the mountain of despair a stone of hope. With this faith, we will be able to transform the jangling discords of our nation into a beautiful, a beautiful symphony of brotherhood. With this faith, we will be able to work together, to pray together, to struggle together, to go to jail together, for st to stand up for freedom together, knowing that we will be free one day. And this will be the day that we will be able to sing with new meaning. My country, tis of thee, sweet land of liberty, of thee I sing. Land where my fathers died, land of the pilgrims' pride. From every mountainside, let freedom ring. And if America is to be a great nation, then this must become true. And so let freedom ring from the prodigious hilltops of New Hampshire. Let freedom ring from mighty mountains of New York. Let freedom ring from the heightening allegenies of Pennsylvania. Let freedom ring from the snow-capped Rockies of Colorado. Let freedom ring from the curvaceous slopes of California. But not only that. Let freedom ring from Stone Mountain in Georgia. Let freedom ring from Lookout Mountain in Tennessee. Let freedom ring from every hill and mohill in Mississippi. From every mountainside, let freedom ring. And when we let this happen, when we let freedom ring, when we let it ring from every village and every hamlet, every state and every city, we will be able to speed up that day when all of God's children, black men and white men, Jews, Gentiles, Protestants, and Catholics, will be able to sit down together and sing the words of the old Negro spiritual. Free at last, free at last, thank God Almighty, we are free at last. Thank you so much, everyone. I hope everyone fares well this holiday break and let the glory of the Lord shine and show everyone its true path. Thank you. One day when the glory comes, it will be ours. It will be ours. Oh, one day when the war is won. the hat.
heavens, no man, no weapon. Formed against, yes, glory is destined. Everyday women and men become legends. Sins that go against our skin become blessings. The movement is a rhythm to us. Freedom is like religion to us. Justice is juxtaposition in us. Justice for all just ain't specific enough. One son died, the spirit is revisiting us. True and living, living in us. Resistance is us. That's why Rosa sat on the bus. That's why we walk through Ferguson with our hands up. When it go down, we woman and man up. They say stay down and we stand up. Shots, we on the ground. The camera panned up. Oh, no. Now the war is not over, victory isn't won, but we'll fight on to the finish, and then when it's all done, we'll cry glory, oh glory, oh. Selma is now for every man, woman, and child. Even Jesus got his crown in front of a crowd. They march with the torch, we gon' run with it now. Never look back, we done gone hundreds of miles. From dark roads, heroes, to become a hero. Facing the league of justice, his power was the people. Enemy is lethal, a king became regal. Saw the face of Jim Crow under a bald ego. No one can win the war individually. It take the wisdom of the elders and young people's energy. Welcome to the story we call. Victory, the coming of the Lord My eyes have seen the glory One day When the glory comes It will be ours Jerusalem Ikayalami Ilondolose Uhambenami Zumangishilana Jerusalem I love you.
downtown The people are rising We thought it was a lockdown They opened the fire Them bullets was flying Who said it was a lockdown? Goddamn lie Oh my, time heals all But you out of time now Judge gotta watch us from the clock tower Little tear gas cleared the whole place out I'll be back with the hazmat for the next round We was trying to protest and the fires broke out Look out for the secret agents They be planted in the crowd Said it's civil unrest But you sleep so sound Like you don't hear the screams When we catch a beat down Stand quiet when they killing But you speak loud when we ride Got opinions coming from a place of prison Sicker than the COVID How they did them on the ground Speaking of the COVID Covid, is it still going around? Oh, won't you tell me about the looting? What's that really all about? 'Cause they throw away black lives like paper towels plus unemployment rate. What? 40 million now killed a man in broad day. Might never see a trial. We just wanna break chains like slaves in the south. Started in the north end, but we in the downtown. Riot cops try to block. Now we got a showdown. Down. You should have been downtown. The people are rising. We thought it was a lockdown They opened the fire And the bullets was flying Who said it was a lockdown? Goddamn that I was too in downtown Where I got popped with the rubber bullet train You may write me down in history with your bitter, twisted lies. You may trod me in the very dirt, but still like dust, I'll rise. Does my sassiness upset you? Why are you beset with gloom? Just because I walk as if I have oil wells pumping in my living room. Just like suns and like moons, with the certainty of tides, just like hope springing high, still I rise. Did you want to see me broken, bowed head and lowered eyes, shoulders falling down like teardrops, weakened by my soulful cries? Does my sassiness upset you? <laughs> Don't take it so hard just because I laugh. As if I have gold mines digging in my own backyard. You can shoot me with your words. You can cut me with your lies. You can kill me with your hatefulness. But just like life, I rise. Does my sexiness offend you? Oh, does it come as a surprise that I dance? As if I have diamonds at the meeting of my thighs. Out of the huts of history's shame, I rise. Up from a past rooted in pain, I rise. A black ocean leaping and wide, welling and swelling, I bear in the tide. Leaving behind nights of terror and fear, I rise. Into a daybreak miraculously clear, I rise bringing the gifts that my ancestors gave. I am the hope and the dream of the slave. And so, naturally, there I go right. I'm Joyce Miller, Education Chair with NAACP Garland Unit, and we have here with us Evan Chanel Walker, the recipient of the Rhodes Trust Scholarship. She is the first ever to receive this award in the Garland ISD and in Rowlett. And so we are so proud of her this morning. Tell us, how did this all happen for you? So um, 
At West Point, I received the institutional endorsement to apply for the Rhodes Scholarship. I went through my application, a series of interviews, and was uh, selected back in November. Um, and, and it's just awesome to be able to represent Garland and my family and the academy um, and to study at Oxford. It's, I'm very excited. Yeah. And it seems as if doing well academically has, is not a strange thing for you. You started in 2016, we remember that you were our NAACP's top scholar at Lake Centennial High School. You mm -hmm. were the, had the top highest GPA of any African American student there. And so we are really elated that you are continuing this academic path and that you also have had leadership. Uh, now serving as uh, supervising what, over 1,100 yes, cadets? Mm -hmm. Tell us about that. Yeah, so I'm um, currently the second reg regimental commander, so I'm responsible for uh, 1,100 cadets at West Point. Mm -hmm. um, and I, that's been an awesome and growing experience. Uh, before that, this past summer, I was the cadet basic training regimental commander. Um, so in charge of the 1,500 cadets that facilitated and were trainees throughout the um, basic training, mm -hmm. um, so the incoming class of 2024. Uh, and that's just been an awesome growing yeah. experience as well. So your major at West Point is? Mm -hmm. Operations research, which is uh, applied mathematics. Okay. Mm -hmm. And when you go to the University of Oxford to work on your master's, your major is going to be? So I want to do um, comparative social policy. Uh, and so I'm just really interested in diversity, equity, and inclusion, and, and specifically tackling inequalities in the workplace. Mm -hmm. um, so hopefully using my quantitative math skills, I can help and um, bridge that with the policy. Wonderful, wonderful. So proud of you. And boxing? Why boxing is your sport? Yeah, so boxing originally I joined um, because I had three siblings, or three cousins at the academy, um, but, and they're all on the boxing team. However, I stayed because I learned so much about discipline and hard work um, and, and resilience, confidence, and so that's kind of why I stayed. It's an awesome sport um, and I've learned so much from it. All right, well, we're very, very proud of you. And so we are presenting you this award, this recognition, being awarded the, the prestigious Rhodes Scholarship, which affords you the opportunity to study at the University of Oxford in England. Proud Thank of you. you. Thank you so much. Congratulations. Thank you. So I hope everyone enjoyed the event, but we would need to um, let everyone know who's responsible for making this happen. So on behalf of the sponsors, the Garland Independent School District, the City of Garland, and the Garland NAACP, we would also like to thank all of the staff members that work with the sponsors to make this event possible, and we would not have been able to do this without their help. It takes a village. So with that, I would like to say that everyone, we hope you enjoyed yourself, and before we go, we want you to commemorate Dr. King's birthday on uh, January, which is the 18th, which is Monday. Do something festive, do something commemorable. And someone once said that to reveal and refresh the human spirit, nothing is like a song. So we will hear from our youth choir, the, from the MLK Youth Choir, and saying the song that we always close it out with, we shall overcome. And take it away, choir, and see you in 2022. Come on.
on, ladies, help us in that barn. We shall ready and go. We shall, we shall Come on, surprise. 